Do you hear that? That sound, that steady rhythm, the beat which has been with you since birth, the soundtrack of your life, your heart. Our bodies cannot function without this persistent, life-sustaining rhythm which is present inside us wherever we go. And of course, when this rhythm is not strong, if it falters, the results can be tragic. I am Dr. Mariam Abdul Richards and welcome to Caribbean Medical TV. In this episode, we will look at the heart and how we protect and preserve this vital core of our bodies. Imagine that at the age of 36, I suffered a heart attack. At that point, I got an abrupt pain in my chest that moved quickly to my left arm, radiating downwards. At that point, I knew something was wrong. I had to call for emergency help immediately. And by the time the emergency services got to me, I had enough time to reach to the hospital to be basically saved with thrombotics, which is what they used to check for the blockage, dissolve the clots in the heart. If I hadn't arrived in time, I wouldn't be here today. I want to give a message to all the women out there, Caribbean, the world at large, that you don't ignore a pain that comes in your chest or your arm, because at that time, it could be your last moment. You don't wait, you move quickly. I'm a mother of three, and I couldn't imagine leaving this world to leave three kids behind without a mother. So it doesn't matter if you're 20, 30, 40, it can happen to any of us at any moment. So don't ignore the signs and symptoms, especially when it comes to chest pains, you don't ignore it. Because if I had ignored it, again, I wouldn't be a survivor of a, what I would see, a massive heart attack. I think what you have seen there in Trinidad, we have seen in Barbados and that's happening globally. So the young age no longer protects you. The reason for this is heart disease is basically genetic. It's your genetics first. You either come from a heart disease family or from a cancer family. So the most important thing is understanding and remembering your family history. So if you're from a family um, with a history of people dying at a young age or having heart surgery at a young age, then, then you're marked. Women are not supposed to have heart disease at a young age, but a young lady born of a father who has had three heart attacks in his 50s or 60s or early 50s and 40s, she is probably at a risk. You know, so the first thing is your genetic endowment. And I think we're seeing that because people are living longer, so we're beginning to see these things manifest themselves. Women and heart disease are a particular interest group because their symptoms do not often present in the classical chest tightness going up to the neck and down the left arm, etc. It often comes as gas or epigastric pain, a bloating in the stomach. And these are things that, when taken lightly, it leads to a disparity in care, quality of care. The, the type and the timing of when these patients seek care. So it's all a matter of recognizing that women can have these same serious heart disease, but their symptoms are a little bit different from the men. And so in that way, not only the patients, but doctors and healthcare professionals can often misread the implications of these symptoms when the patients come and complain for these symptoms. I think if you go to a doctor today, and the doctor does not inquire of you as a woman, your obstetric history, then you've been badly served. Because that is a clear risk factor. So in terms of prevention, to prevent you must have the knowledge. So we're hoping now to extend the knowledge to young women that they need to recall their obstetric history. So if you're in your 50s, 40s, and you've gone past the days of, of making more children, 
it is important that you remember how healthy you were or how unhealthy you were during your pregnancy. Years ago, we used to say 200 heart attacks per year. Listening to my younger colleagues who were still in the front line in the hospital, I think that's, they say that's double and even that they say is, is an underestimate. When that life-giving pumping is malfunctioning, our lives can quickly become at stake. The prevalence of heart issues among our Caribbean people unfortunately means that the problem may eventually touch all of us in some way. It is essential to be aware of this crisis which afflicts our region. So like every other place in the world, the incidence of heart disease in this island is on the increase as it is regionally and increase to a worrying extent because when you get heart disease and you get bypass surgery, think about it of, of each individual as an economic unit. That is one economic unit removed from the productivity of the country. And that economic unit has to be supported by your national insurance system. So it is not as flimsy a problem as people think it is. And the ripple effect is, is amazing. And then there's a burden of, on the family because this might have been a person, you know, maybe in their 50s, still working, able to provide for themselves and, and their family, was now being taken out of the workforce, so there's a loss of income. And then the family needs to now provide a caregiver for this person. It can be very difficult on families. It can be very difficult for many different aspects and impacts on their own health their mental health, their physical health, because they become very stressed and their, their body starts to break down as a result of it. They, they can't find the time to look after themselves anymore. So they themselves may have hypertension, but they can't find the time to go to the doctor because they have to go to work. And then when they're home, they have to take care of their loved one who is incapacitated. So it leaves very little time for themselves. As the heart is both a powerful and fragile organ, there are many factors that can affect its proper function as it strives to push life-giving blood throughout your body. So we see more and more young people having heart problems these days and some of them are actually related to cholesterol heart attacks. Some of them are related to genetic problems and it's always been a challenge. That science is still in evolution but looking at things in a wider way we know that if you have a family history of certain problems, you should probably be having these discussions with your pediatrician. You should be looking at your risk. And for people, for example, who have high blood cholesterol in their families, we no longer wait till adulthood to check. We check in childhood. Similarly, for people who have diabetes in their family, we, if not through ordering a blood test, at least through counseling about symptoms, what to look out for in the early stages so that you're not surprised with a disease diagnosis having had everything building up to that point for many years. What advice would you have for patients who do their blood investigations and blood tests and they see HDL, VLDL, LDL, which is the good cholesterol and, and, and the bad cholesterol? That's an excellent question because it's something that, that not a lot of people fully understand what cholesterol is. And cholesterol is essentially fat in the blood. It's a type of fat. It's found in the blood and it's something that we actually need as a part of the normal functioning of our bodies. Usually produced by the liver and it's used in a number of processes to form our cells, to form different hormones. So it's something that we need. But in some people it's found in excess. LDL is usually what we consider to be the bad cholesterol and the HDL considered to be the good cholesterol. Um, HDL is considered to be good because it actually removes some of that cholesterol. It's a, it's a particle and it, it carries some of this back, the cholesterol back to the liver where it can be disposed of. And the LDL is cholesterol where sometimes it becomes deposited within the blood vessel which is what initiates the start of that atherosclerotic plaque or narrowing. We need to enjoy the outdoors as much as we can. Look at this. We're on location in Grand Coover, in Trinidad and Tobago, and we're enjoying the natural environment. Our natural environment helps us to de-stress. It's important for our personal well-being, and there are so many other health benefits. You know, all our entire lives, our fears, our passion, 
and our joy all culminate in the heart. And so on today's program, we are dealing with this important muscle and tackling one of the Caribbean's most common diseases, heart disease. We'll hear more from our doctors right after this. At Guardian Group, we've seen so many of our customers achieve great things. From key moments when together we've planned for the future to those unforgettable days when you've celebrated the rewards of those great decisions. So, it's no surprise that after 175 years, our optimism is stronger than ever. Because when you've partnered with people to achieve their best lives as long as we have, you tend to see the world a little brighter every day. Guardian Group. Live easy. The way we take care of our bodies can be a factor that is often overlooked in our busy lives. When it comes to heart health, certain unhealthy habits can have life-changing effects. People are doing a lot more at work. You're working longer hours, you're putting in more effort but it comes at a great cost. The sacrifice you have to make so that you can get to work on time and you often leave late. So there's not that time to exercise, there's not that time to go in the kitchen garden and everybody is driving to work or in public transportation. So it makes that healthy part of your lifestyle a lot more challenging to accomplish. But guess what's one of the best triggers for any medical problem? It is stress. The brain and the heart and the body are all connected. And I have patients who have heart rhythm problems and have tried tablet after tablet and have not had success. But then their boss got moved to a different island and all their heart rhythm problems went away. It helps to keep us humble on our side. It's also so important to realize that it's hard to have a healthy body if you don't have a healthy mind. Stress has been around for thousands of years. Our ancestors had to deal with stress and it's always existed in our lives. We tend to look at the 21st century and think that we are the only generation that is under stress. That's not necessarily uh, the truth. And why I'm saying that is that our bodies are equipped to deal with stress to a certain degree. So we have a short-term stress, which we call acute stress. and We have a long-term stress, which we call chronic stress. And there's a stress somewhere in between. I think the major difference is between how we react to acute stress and chronic stress. Smoking is considered one of the causative factors or risk factors for development of non-communicable diseases. How does smoking affect or impact a patient leading to the development of a non-communicable disease? Well, smoking has a number of different impacts because it, it increases the risk of atherosclerosis, which is essentially buildup of plaque within the blood vessels all over the body. And depending on which system it builds up in will determine how it becomes manifest, for example, in the brain or in the heart. And smoking increases the risk of this narrowing or atherosclerosis to, to occur, as well as increasing the risk of this plaque to rupture. And when it ruptures, it causes a clot which blocks off the circulation to that organ immediately, very quickly, which is why we end up with heart attacks, which is why heart attacks are sudden. As you increase the amount of alcohol that you consume, you actually cause small increases in the blood pressure. And that small increase in the blood pressure can lead to more buildup of plaque eventually, leading again to heart disease, strokes, kidney disease. Some people will go out for extreme nights of drinking, drinking multiple cues of rum, for example, for the night and this can cause irregularities of the heart rhythm. It can cause a situation called atrial fibrillation um, because of what it does to the actual cells of the heart. And in some cases, with long-term consumption of excessive amounts of alcohol, it can actually lead to weakness of the heart, what we call a cardiomyopathy. And I want to highlight a particular worrying recent observation. We are seeing a lot more young people coming into hospital with heart attacks and heart disease. And when you probe their history, there seems to be a trend of these people involving themselves in what is known as vaping. This new trend of social activity, it seems to be having an effect by bringing more younger people, particularly young females, 
into the hospital with heart disease, heart attacks. When I first came back to Guyana in 2012, the regular average age for a heart attack was in the 40s and 50s. What is worrying now is that we're starting to see a number of 30-year-olds and even late 20s coming into hospital with heart attacks and not minor, small heart attacks. We're talking about major problems. And that's a worrying thing that I believe we need to have a frank, open discussion and education to understand the risks involved in these trendy behaviors. We have a number of chemicals, some of which are known, some are not known yet, and to be studied that can cause heart disease. What we do know that even in the absence of nicotine being a major ingredient in these vaping, there are chemicals there that can cause spasms of the blood vessels, they can cause clots to form, they can damage the interior lining of the blood vessels, they can spike blood pressures, all of these things and as well they can cause abnormal heart rhythms. These can all cause patients to have heart attack, heart disease, and then come to hospital with very serious complications. So there are things in those vapes that we don't quite know yet about. The chemicals are not all fully studied, but we know what they are causing. So the heart is like a pump, and in the pump sometimes there are these fuel lines that supply it with gas. So our heart pump is fueled by blood, which is these coronary arteries and sometimes these coronary arteries, they get blocked. They get narrowed. Just like our fuel line, we get blocked in a pump. And so it's when the heart requires more blood, more energy, uh, more fuel, and these coronary arteries are blocked, sometimes patients may get chest pain, shortness of breath, cold sweats, and because the heart can't provide enough fuel or blood to it to be able to pump properly, and the muscle of the heart is affected. There are many things that cause these blockages, such as uh, which you may have heard before, diabetes, high blood pressure, is seen in smokers, people with family history of heart disease, people with sedentary lifestyles, people who actually don't exercise, uh, eat well, sometimes high stress environments can actually increase your risk of coronary artery disease. So what, what happens is when these coronary arteries gradually narrowed, you will find that these, these people are susceptible to future events such as heart attacks where you have complete closure of one of the pipes. Besides being aware of your risk factors, knowing the signs and symptoms of a heart problem is so important so you can find help as soon as possible. The symptoms of heart attack and heart failure basically remain the same regardless of the underlying cause. People with heart failure generally have shortness of breath, easy fatigue, they can't do their work normally, they're always tired, they can't lie down flat, swelling of the legs, etc. What we need to highlight, with people with heart attack, the textbooks would tell us ordinarily that you know they have this squeezing tightness in the middle of the chest and it radiates up to the jaw, comes down the left arm, etc. Well, that's a classic description of what happens. In our population, it's not always classic. We often have a discomfort, a little uneasy feeling. The one thing that is always intriguing in this population, people always complain about gas. And a lot of time they think, oh, they're gonna drink some hot tea, they're gonna drink something before they get to hospital. But guess what? When you do that two, three days, and it gas, so to speak, doesn't disappear, by the time they get to hospital to get checked out, the heart has already undergone a significant damage, often irreversible. So we should not be taking symptoms anywhere from the navel to the neck lightly, especially if it feels like gas, it feels like cramping, especially if it's exertional, meaning when you exercise, when you're doing work. These kinds of things cannot really be taken lightly, especially if you know you have risk factors. And those risk factors, as we mentioned before, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, a sedentary lifestyle, not regular exercise, smoking, vaping, etc., or a family history of having heart disease. These are things that we need to bear in mind. Once you have any symptoms of heart disease, there are many modern day methods to find out more about the issue so you can receive the proper treatment. The cardiologist will uh, ex uh, make an examination of the, of the patient 
investigating what are the symptoms, what he feels, what are the problems, so we can see if there are some problem of uh, activity because the lack of oxygen creates some abnormalities in the, in, the, in the function of the heart. Looking at the electrocardiogram, doing an echocardiogram. The echocardiogram being an ultrasound of the heart, whereas the ECG or EKG involves just putting wires on the heart that looks at the electrical activity of the heart. So that doesn't tell you much about heart function, but it tells you more about rhythm of the heart, what the heart rhythm is in, uh, but it can also give you other clues out things such as a heart attack. An echocardiogram is essentially an ultrasound of the heart. It involves us rubbing jelly on the chest and then putting something called a probe on the actual front of the chest to take pictures of the heart. The echocardiogram being an ultrasound test allows us to see the structure and the function of the heart. So we can actually see how the heart is pumping using this ultrasound test. And we can see if patients have had a heart attack or what the overall function of the heart is doing. And by determining that, one, we can confirm the diagnosis of a heart attack, but also to determine what the long-term outlook or prognosis for these patients are by looking at the overall heart function. In our organization, you know, we, we engage quite a bit in, in what we call CSR, our Power to Make a Difference program, and our Power to Make a Difference program actually touches on, on, on quite a bit as well of what uh, the sustainability and the equity goals uh, align to these principles of responsible banking are all about, but it's, it's so much more. As we go forward at the group level, Okay, it is our intention to, 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 to spread this out, to let Republic Bank maybe be the cheerleader for this initiative in the Caribbean. With the essential role the heart plays in our body's functions, it is important to embrace a lifestyle that safeguards our heart health. Studies show again and again that nutrition and regular exercise are essential to having a healthy heart. Take stock of what you eat, how you exercise, and how you treat your body. 100 years ago, our grandparents, grand-grandparents, used to work in the fields, used to have their physical activity, eating meat once per week, but the, the lifestyle was well different. Now, of course, the food is one of the pleasures of, la of life. We cannot deny that. Moderation is what is uh, strongly recommended. Re moderation in food, uh, controlling the risk factor, diabetes, uh, hypertension, and, uh, and so on, and physical activity. With this, the control of the situation can be satisfying. My plea would be for all of us now to go to that area of the room and pull the nutritionist to play a central role. My role is to keep monitoring you for the medication I put you on, looking out uh, that you don't have the side effects, making the determination that I could take you off this medication. But the most I could tell you in respect to, to nutrition is eat oily fish. And I think that's the limit of my knowledge with nutrition and stay away from fried and fatty foods, cut down your, 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 your dairy products. Yes, you can have a glass of wine and eat fresh fruits and vegetables, but the person who is going to give you the details of how much of what you should be eating, they have, they're still in the pavilion, padded up, and they have not come to the crease as yet and we need to get those people involved. So I think we should actually be spending time on the younger generation, and this is going to save the government, not millions, but billions of dollars in our healthcare, in the healthcare industry. And we, we see also that eating well doesn't only reduce heart attack and cardiovascular disease, it actually helps reduce cancer as well. So the reduction of cancer, which is now the number two cause of death, and cardiovascular disease, which is the number one cause of death in Trinidad and many Caribbean islands, can be changed 
by just diet and exercise from a young age. Tune into future episodes of Caribbean Medical, where we will talk more about how your diet can save your heart. Even in the wider field of cardiology, so many advancements have come about and are continuing to come about. That conditions which 10, 20, 30 years ago would have resulted in you losing the life you know are not that way anymore. There's much hope to be had for the cardiac patient. It's not nice to have a medical problem. But if you are going to get a medical problem, it's best to have one that we can help with. And we are fortunate enough in the modern era to be able to help most people with cardiac problems. So as you just heard, I would like to give a special thanks to all of the cardiologists that assisted me during my time of illness. Without them, I would not have the education that I have now and following the instructions given to me to be here today. It goes a long way and with technology, medication, lifestyle changes as stated before, we all have a long way to go with heart disease once we listen to our medical team. We have heard so much valuable information from our Caribbean doctors about the dangers of heart disease. And the good news is that it can be cured. We can make the changes through either a medical procedure, medication, and ultimately making changes in our habits. We all strive to enjoy life and it starts with our health and well-being. Let us all aim for striking the perfect balance from our strength spiritually to taking care of our physical, emotional, and social wellness. Our thanks to all our Caribbean doctors, nurses, and the medical and wellness fraternity for the great work they are doing. We look forward to seeing you next time on Caribbean Medical TV. Thanks for viewing.